Hey guys, Kev here, and I'm gonna do uh, full reviews on two knives here. So rapid review. Uh, as you can tell, I'm in a different spot. I'm in my office right now. I'm just using the live stream mount that I use for my uh, phone, and I'm just doing it in here. It just seemed easier than setting up a tripod and all that shit in my studio. Uh, and obviously, I'm not in my truck. It's dark out. So anyway, I have the Kaiser bag lighter xl here and that is the button lock and i also have the pmp knives big boy so i want to do rapid reviews on both of these so to speak and uh both of these were loaned in to the channel by white mountain knives so a uh, big shout out to uh, white mountain knives these guys are awesome uh, they're very supportive of the channel. Uh, they send knives on loan. They send knives for giveaway. Uh, they sell me knives at a discount so I can give them away. Um, they're very nice. And uh, I have a discount code there, obviously. Lefty10, L-E-F-T-Y-10. You'll get 10% off your order and free shipping if you are in the U.S. So let's start this bad boy off with the... Uh, PMP Knives Big Boy. So this one was a surprise for me. So uh, I obviously liked it enough to want to check it out, right? But not want to buy it. Um, so I'm very grateful they sent it to me because it turns out that I really do like this knife quite a bit. Um, it is, in terms of materials, we have titanium scales and backspacer. We have uh, 14C28N on the blade steel. And then uh, we have a uh steel i believe wire clip I believe that's steel uh, i do have a magnet here so we can find out yep steel wire clip and uh it is a belt satin or machine satin so to speak on the blade and sort of a, a light stone wash on the scales it does come in a blue version uh so you can get it in another color and it is a flipper only design in terms of specs because i have my laptop right here i can actually give you some specs uh real quick overall length is 7.78 inches uh the close length so um handle close is 5.08 inches the blade length is 3.65 inches so it's you know i'd put it on that medium to large end um, we have a blade thickness of 0.13 inches, uh, which is going to uh, be important later. Uh, it's a plain edge, obviously, and it is a flat grind, uh, satin finish, drop point, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And it's $160 and it is available on White Mountain Knives currently. You can use my code. That'll save you, uh, 36 bucks if I can do math. No, uh, $16. Sorry, I was thinking 20%. Uh, that will save you uh, $16, so it'll be $144 plus tax and that shit, right? Sorry, uh, my math skills are terrible. So let's get into it. Uh, aesthetically, I like the look. Um, it's a little bit uh, taller than a knife, like, than I usually like. Uh, I just don't like big knives. It's called the big boy, right? It's not that big, but like the sheepdog, like that kind of stuff just isn't for me, really. Uh, there are some exceptions, like, excuse me, um, I feel like the F5.5 and the Roxy 3 are a little bit taller. So I don't know if it's just the perception because of the big blade or what. Like today I'm carrying the cuff. 2 uh, V2, and even that is close in size. It's obviously a smaller overall package, but uh, it's not like, you know, dwarfing it or anything. It just, to me, is a little bigger than something I'd want to carry, like, every day, you know what I mean? But it's really um, a good-looking knife. I enjoy the drop point blade. I love this swedge up here. Um, the titanium's finished really well. The clip is done really well uh, aesthetically. I obviously wish it was deeper carry, but we'll get to that in carry. Um, so aesthetically, I'd say it's good. I like the machine satin. Uh, so overall, it obviously was good enough looking for me to want to check one out, right? So there's that. Uh, ergonomics are extremely comfortable on this knife. 
I get a full four finger grip, obviously with change. And it's just an excellent grip. Now this is gonna be your only grip. You can't really choke up like you can, but obviously I'm right on that edge. You're not gonna to wanna to do anything. That right here is poking me, the flipper tab. So um, you really just have this one grip. You kind of have a choil here and then it, it kind of just swells a little bit and then swells back in the other way. It's very comfortable in hand. Uh, like I said, you just get the one grip. If you have a, a huge hand, like I have a large glove size hand, so I think large XL, you should still fit on here. Anything bigger than that, you're going to have pinkies hanging off and it might be uncomfortable on this bump. Uh, so I can't speak to that. Uh, the flipper tab, the um, jimping on there is very well done. Hopefully you're seeing that. Um, and the jimping on the spine is done well too. So uh, no issues ergonomically with the flipper tab. That feels good. Uh, yeah, uh, so cutting, I really enjoyed cutting with this knife. Now this is a loner, so I'm not gonna do a lot with it because they're probably gonna sell it open box when it gets back. Um, I cut some shipping labels, a couple packages, and a little bit of paper just to see how it does, right? So um, I haven't done anything to the edge, but I think I opened a package or two uh, on camera actually, and. It is very slicey because it has that full flat grind, or sorry, flat grind that starts almost at the top. And I mean, it is a full flat back here, I guess. I don't know what you'd call it, but uh, you have that 0.13 stock and looking at how tall this is, you can see how thin this comes down to at the edge. It's just extremely thin and really slicey. I, I very much enjoyed cutting with this guy um it was a pleasure so um you know you have great ergonomics you have a great blade you can do a lot of slicing type tasks with it very well um and then you can pinch up on it to do like shipping labels and stuff the tip i could get low enough to get into those um so i really enjoyed the cutting and it does a great job now it's 14c28n uh, everybody's favorite budget steel basically and um i do like the steel i think for the price point 160 dollars that's a little steep i think for 14c like i know you're getting titanium and everything but i feel like you should have just went for s35 even though the difference between 14c and s35 i don't think is as vast as some people think it would be um i just think that it would come off better at that price point if people saw S35 instead of 14C. Um, and the price difference really can't be that big. So I don't know, That's it's a weird steel choice when you consider the price, uh, but it doesn't bother me. I just wanna you know point that out. Uh, carry, so you have this uh, deep carry wire clip. Uh, it does not go to the end of the knife. I, I really wish it, it went further back. I mean, you got a lot of knife sticking out for having a deep carry wire clip. Um, but it is reversible. I like how they used uh, that nice big screw to seat it in. Uh, it's actually pretty cool, if I remember correctly, under the screw, the way that the, the wire, it kind of like wraps around and seats in. So it's very secure in there. Uh, it does have a little bit of wiggle movement, but it's not wiggling up here. It's just the flex of the wire clip. It goes in pocket really well, comes out really well. Um, again, my only really downside to it is uh, it's tall, right? So you're going to have that in pocket. I carried it front left pocket, and it was pretty noticeable because of how big it is, right? There is internal milling in there, so the weight is really good. Um, and it's a thin knife, guys. It is called the big boy, but it's not a thick knife. Um, it's just sort of a big knife, I guess, in general. It kind of reminds me of a slimmed out Urban ADC Supply Nessie. Um, I like this better than the Nessie because it's thinner. It's not thick, but it's about the same size overall, profile-wise, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, really, really good. Uh, centering is dead nuts, by the way. We have no play or anything. Um, sounds. Sounds are really good. It has a nice thwack out. 
and a nice kick on the down uh, on the close. I, I really enjoy the sounds. I'd put it at probably an eight on this one. The way the milling just reverberates, it all sounds really good in my opinion. Uh, action, right? So the D10 on this, while I can fail it like that, it's because it's a big blade, right? It's got some weight to it, even though it is thin. It's a tall, big blade, right? Now, the jipping is very well done, and I think the D10 is perfect. When you give it, like, just enough to uh, deploy, it fires out of there. I mean, you can really hammer this out, yet you can fail it, but it's just because of the nature of the blade. Um, I have no qualms with this detent, guys. This is, I believe, manufactured by Kubi. Uh, this is the second knife recently I've had in that's hand, uh, manufactured by Kubi, and I'm impressed. I really am enjoying their work right now. Um, so, yeah, the action on the open is... Oh, sorry, that was me. The action on the open is really good. Uh, on the close, it's a dropper. Just, again, size, weight of the blade... It's on bearings. It's just going to drop shut, right? Uh, and again, I've never failed this like while fidgeting uh, or, you know, using it or whatever. It's only when I'm like trying to fail it or like just now I was like dicking around or something and you fail it, right? Normally fires every time. Um, I don't know if I talked about this in the ergos, but the jimping up on the blade is kind of minimal. Like it's, it's tight jimping. So... <sighs> It doesn't do much, but it's still good. I like that it's there. I just wish it was a little more aggressive, kind of like the jimping on the flipper tab. You can see my skin cells in the flipper tab jimping. Um, and that's what tends to happen to me with some jimping. I don't know why, um, but I don't know. I think it's a me problem. Like my fingers are just, just have dry, dead skin all over them. Um, so anyway, I'll clean that out before I send it back. You do have this big lanyard kind of post thing at the back too. So anyway, overall, I really like this knife. Uh, if you're into this aesthetic, if you're into a bigger blade, like if you like the sheepdog flipper, if you like the Nessie, that kind of stuff, I think you're really going to dig this. I would give it a chance, especially at 160 bucks. I think it's a good price. I do think the steel is going to throw some people. Doesn't bother me, but I think it's going to bother some people that it's 14C for that price. Um, and yeah, that's it. So that is the uh, PMP Big Boy. Then we have the Kaiser Bag Lighter XL. I believe this is a White Mountain Knives exclusive. Yes, it is. I can confirm that. This one is $80. Uh, it says MSRP 113, but it's listed at 80 and this is not available on the website right now. The big boy is. This is not. But you can always set the notify me for when they get back in stock. Use your code lefty10 at checkout. So this is a big one, guys. Uh, this one I've seen listed at 4 inches. And I've also seen it listed at 3.9. Um, it is 9 inches overall. Blade thickness, 0.125. Blade material is 154 cm. It's a drop point blade, obviously, which is a little different because the bag lighter did come in a tanto at one point. Uh, it's a flat grind, obviously, a plain edge, uh, closed. So handle length is five inches. Handle thickness is 0.56 inches. Handle material is brown micarta. You have a stainless steel frame slash liners. The weight is 5.2 ounces. You do have this deep carry uh, steel clip right here, which is reversible. You can see I have it on the left side. It is a button lock with thumb studs and a flipper. Manufactured in China by Kaiser, and it is an Azo design. So there's your stats, guys. Um, it does have a stonewashed blade. It doesn't say that on here, but it's a stonewashed blade. You can see there. And it is uh, brown slash natural micarta. Uh, you're looking at T8 all around, maybe? No. Actually, I think the clip might be T6. Hard to tell, but I switched it. I'm guessing it's T6, but hard to tell. Um, so, the button lock bag lighter XL, guys. This one is pretty much a fail for me. Uh, it's not 
one that I have much appreciation for. Uh, I think they went a little too big on it. Now, I know some people love the big knives. That's fine. And then I think the execution of the button lock is just off a little bit. And then the way they did the button bothers me. And that's starting to bother me more and more. The Cormorant, this knife. Uh, there's another one recently. I think it was another Kaiser that had a button lock bothered me. Um, CJRB just came out with one. That looks like it's going to bother me. And I will explain that So uh, when we get to action. But anyway, aesthetically, it's a meh to me. I mean, it's a drop point. Overall, it's a knife. It's a large bag lighter. Okay, cool, right? But I don't know. I don't like the shadow box stainless steel I don't like the shiny steel all over it. That looks good when it's titanium, but when it's steel, it's kind of eh, you know what I mean? And I guess that's partially the finish, but I just don't like how that is. Um, so it's not my aesthetic really. It's big, it's kind of heavy. I mean, what did I say? 5.2 ounces, uh, you know, so yeah, not my thing there. Uh, Ergo's it's, yeah, it's pretty comfortable. I mean, it's basically one swell and a neutral handle, right? So it's hard to go wrong. Because of the size, you can climb up onto this flipper tab if you want. I actually never did that. Um, it just is a little bit awkward for me, but you can do that. Um, I basically just lived back here the whole time, and I felt like I was far away from the blade, which I don't like, right? Um, but again, you could climb up here. So ergos are okay. You have a little bit of jimping on the flipper tab, but really not very aggressive there. And then you have some up on the spine. Same thing, not very aggressive. Um, so ergos overall are okay. They're definitely satisfactory. They're not great though, right? Uh, cutting. So I didn't do a ton of cutting with this. Again, these are loners. Uh, it is a flat grind. Starts up here, so it's a, a, a very tall flat grind. Uh, comes down to a relatively thin edge. I wouldn't say it's like super thin or slicey or anything, um, but definitely perfect for EDC and, and things like that. Um, I don't think there's any issue with it. I cut some shipping labels, some packaging, real simple stuff again. Um, because of the size of the knife, it does make it more difficult for me to do the shipping labels because I have so much knife like all up in my wrist in my hand, I can't get great control of this tip, right? Uh, I'm pretty far away from it. I'm not gonna climb all the way up here like this. It's just not gonna work great. So I don't end up having a lot of control. So when I go to cut labels, I don't cut very straight lines, right? Um, but for regular EDC stuff, slashing a bag, uh, opening packaging, uh, cutting some cardboard down, it's gonna do a good job. And that flat grind and four inch blade is gonna do very well for things like cutting a lot of cardboard, right? I don't think it would be an issue. Uh, whether the lock holds up to it, I'm sure it would, but um, again, not my favorite button lock here. Um, carry, again, it's a big one, guys. I just didn't enjoy the big, heavy, weighty knife in my pocket. The steel is a bit much. Uh, I do like that it has a reversible clip. It is deep carry. It works great, right? Goes in pocket. Comes out of pocket very well. I carried it front left pocket. But you just have a lot of knife in your pocket. It's long. It's heavy. Just not my favorite, right? Um, sounds. Sounds are pretty good. I mean, for a button lock. Yeah, I mean, I give it like a six out of 10, nothing crazy, but nothing bad, right? Uh, action, so this is where it's like a love it or hate it situation for me. We are dead nuts on centering. Uh, so you have this flipper tab and it's putrid. I mean, the detent, detent, the spring, whatever, is just not great. Now you can, I tried to flip it that time. You can flip it pretty easily, but it's never satisfying. Like it's never gonna quata, right? It's never gonna like flunk out the way, like I have this to review, the stunner. That thing hammers out, right? Excellent detent, even the big boy. Just satisfying the way it comes out of there. This just is kind of like meh, you know, it's just like, I'll deploy for you, sure. 
Uh, and it is easy to miss it, you know, like I'm flicking relatively hard here and not locking up. Um, now they did dial the spring or whatever for the thumb studs. Well, I, t I don't think I can fail. Not with an actual flick, I can't fail the studs. Again, it's a big knife, so you got to contend with that. You're not going to get a big quatunk, but uh, you do get pretty good action on the thumb studs. I kind of wish they would have just went thumb stud only on this guy. I would have felt much better about the whole action situation because the flipper kind of kills it for me, you know? And it's an extra thing sticking out. Like, they should have just went with no flipper on it. Um, closing action, push the button, she drops. It does tend to double bounce sometimes. So you either hold it and let it close or let go right away. Click and let go. And it sucks it in. But if you hold it, it's going to bounce a few times, right? Uh, it does have a little bit of the Kaiser rattle. But that's kind of a button lock thing. So it's hard to really hold that against the knife. Okay. My biggest gripe with this knife, other than the overall size and just enormity of it which it's called the big lighter xl so it's hard to hold that against the knife i knew going in it was huge right so you have to factor that in my biggest issue is the button and this is what's bothering me about all these budget button locks is they're not doing the button properly you see how they put like a little bit of a recess around the button Hopefully you can see that. It's absolutely useless. It's not, I mean, the recess is there, but the button is well above the recess, right? Like, hopefully you see how high that button is. And then when it's open, the button is even higher. So at no point is that recess doing anything. Your finger never goes in the recess because when you push the button... The button stops before you ever get to that spot. It's weird. Um, and the problem with that is specifically as a lefty, when you go to reverse flick this, guess where your index finger is? It's all over the button. All over it. And you end up depressing it a little bit. And then it disengages. And then you can't reverse flick it because you have no detent. Hope that makes sense to you guys. So no matter, like I'm trying to put my finger somewhere else, I'm always like right in that area. And I'm all like, the most comfortable spot for me is right here to reverse flick it. And guess what? It's right on the button. Uh, look, when you flick right-handed, where do I put my finger? Right there. Well, what's right on the opposite side? The button. So as a lefty, it just literally kills the 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 fun factor of this knife because you can't really reverse flick it and i had the same exact problem with the cormorant and that's what i'm saying it's just it's a um it's a pattern now with these budget button locks they're not paying attention to the button they need to make the button smaller like shorter and then they need to have that recess actually do something if i wish i had my malibu here right now if you look at a Malibu, the button sits flush with the recess. The little bit they cut around it, it sits flush with that. So when you rest your finger across it like this, like a lefty does when he does a reverse flick, you don't reverse flick a Malibu, I know. But if you rested your finger like this, it wouldn't depress the button because the weight of your finger gets spread across that recess. And then the button doesn't get depressed. But on this... You just have button, so you're going to push the button. So I hope that makes sense. That's what's bugging me about these budget button locks. And this is where I need to give Civivi credit. They have been nailing that on both the Cogent uh, and the Altus. Specifically the Altus because it was a thumb stud knife. I had no problem reverse flicking it. That button was not being tampered with at all or like engaged by my finger at all so um thank you to Savivi for doing it correctly right kaiser you need to work on this cjrb you need to work on that man you're not focusing on i get it lefty suck we don't care about 10 percent of the market great fine then don't give me a lefty clip 
Like you're obviously considering us a little bit. Take the time to think about how this is going to affect a lefty as well. That's all I'm saying. So otherwise, I think as a knife, it's fine. I think it's a decent knife. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy this knife because it's big and it's a button lock and everybody loves that right now, right? The action is good enough. Uh, the flipper does not need to be there, honestly. As a thumb stud knife, it's great. So overall, decent knife, just not for me personally and not for me as a lefty, right? So that's it, guys. Uh, quick, uh, quick, rapid reviews on the Kaiser Beglighter XL button lock and the PMP Big Boy. Again, big thank you to White Mountain Knives for loaning these into the channel. Go check out their website, guys. Use code LEFTY10 at checkout for 10% off your order, free shipping in the U.S. And while you're at it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. If you want to support the channel, there's a membership button down there. There's Patreon. There's all types of links in the description you can use that help the channel. Um, hit me up. Leave me a comment in the comment section. And uh, let me know what you think about these two. Are you a big fan? of either of these, um, you know, I don't know, but, uh, I do like the big boy quite a bit, not so much on this one, I'm not going to own this one, but I do really respect it and appreciate this knife, so that's it, I love you guys, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will catch you later.